so proxy server so that is what the topic first topic which you're going to discuss today right so this diagram uh, which has been uh, indicating that how this uh, proxy server is being working on it so here if you seen that uh, they are given one uh, name which is called isp so isp is nothing that uh, internet service provider so uh, internet service provider has been uh, available throughout the country and uh, there are uh, public uh, service provider as well as the private service provider also been available so those are from the government where uh, uh, it's all public service provider and the private it's all private organization so they also uh, have uh, isp uh, providers are been available so uh, if you seen that uh, from uh, government we have a bsnl and vsnl so these two are the main uh, parties they are giving the uh, internet service to the uh, people and uh, these are all from the government side and from the private there are so many are there so from there you can go for uh, taking up the connection and you can use it so something like sifi and you have that uh, uh, airtel then you have the uh, geo and a lot of uh, lot of uh, players are being there so from there you can go for uh, getting the connection and then you can uh, uh, connect to the internet and then you can uh, get the uh, details so this diagram if you have seen that uh, the isp network which will be uh, located in a different part of the country and uh, for that there will be a backbone network so through that only the entire isp will be connected and, and then uh, via that uh, the entire uh, transaction will be uh, taken place and uh, here uh, the one of the key thing is bandwidth so bandwidth it's all depend depends the type of uh, connection that you're taking it so uh, either maybe a landline connections or it may be a, a wireless connections or uh, wi-fi connections you might have go for it so based on that uh, your bandwidth will be uh, uh, limited and accordingly it will work and uh, the main thing is the customer need to connect to the isp and the isp will connect to the back backbone network and through that only the transaction will be taken place and it will be reaching to the the corresponding party so from one i from the customer so this is going to be a customer network and from the customer network which will be connecting to the isp network and from the isp network which will be connecting to the uh, route which is called a backbone network and from the backbone network it will be targeting to the corresponding isp network provider and it will be connecting it and through that the transaction will be uh, taken place so this is what uh, uh, the process will be happening at the uh, background whenever you are trying to uh, use the uh, internet connections so here uh, from uh, is from your customer network so this customer network if you want to connect to that isp network so that will happen through a proxy server so there will be a server which will be kept on the customer side uh, where uh, uh, here if you see in the as per this diagram isp network is going to be your proxy server so from the customer they will be connecting to this isp network so that is going to be a proxy server and the actual server will be a backbone network and via that it will be connecting to the corresponding server which you look out for it and when you want to connect to the corresponding server also there also will be having one more isp network and through it will be reaching to the target machine and which will be fetching out the information and to be uh, providing the information back to you so uh, behind if you seen that there are a lot of works are happening just uh, just a click that you are getting information but we seen that uh, from your system it will be you need to uh, connect to the proxy server and from the proxy server will be taken to the network and from the network it will go to the backbone network and from the backbone network will be connected to the another isp uh, network and from there it will be connecting to the the corresponding system which you are targeting on it and from there it will be fetching out the information and then uh, again uh, the same process will be happening to be reaching to the the target machine so this is what uh, this particular diagram has been indicating on it right now so here when you're going for a proxy server the cost of connection is uh, basically uh, depend on the bandwidth so uh, how much of a bandwidth that you're going for the higher the bandwidth the cost will be more the lower the bandwidth uh, the cost will be less so depends on your bandwidth uh, the amount will be get charged and uh, second one is like uh, the cost of connection is the major part of the network cost so uh, again uh, the network also become uh, uh, playing a vital role and through that only you'll be going for connecting uh, to the different machines so the network setup cost which is in a huge one so that is also another uh, thing uh, when you go for uh, your proxy server and third one the organization only obtain as much bandwidth as they can afford again uh, uh, depends on the types of organization so either maybe a uh, 
small scale organization or with maybe a large scale organization depends on the organization strength they might go for uh, taking up the bandwidth and uh, they will be using on it so accordingly they'll be start using on it okay and uh, the example has been given uh, one uh, this has been for asia specific uh, countries so they have only uh, mbbs uh, mbbs uh, connections uh, and it is seen that uh, when you go for uh, uh, Europe countries, they have a more bandwidth like 2.4 GBPS to 10 GBPS. It's a older one, but now even uh, we are getting uh, uh, more bandwidth, we are getting it because as the number of uh, uh, systems are being grown and the number of customers are being get grown. So because of that, uh, the bandwidth has been increased. So uh, if you see that even now nowadays we are even getting uh, in GBPS speed, we are getting it. So that is what the uh, bandwidth which we are getting it and through that, uh, uh, we can get the uh, information as fast as possible uh, to our system. So there is uh, another one which is being called as web proxy. So what is this web proxy? The proxy, which is a host, which relays web access request from the client. Now, here uh, you can see that uh, the diagram, the bottom, that there, there is a diagram which is being given. So in the diagram, you can see that there are uh, one first one which has been named as browser which is the basically nothing that your client system and through that only you are going to give a request and uh, when you made the request the request would be going to the yeah, server so which server uh, is being called as a proxy server and the proxy server will uh, maintain all your details uh, you cannot directly connect to the isp so what you will be doing it will be connecting to the proxy server and from there it will be connecting to the uh, web and from the web it will be connecting to the corresponding uh, machine and from there it will be fetching all the information again the other side also there will be one more proxy and through that only it will be reaching to the uh, target machine and from the target machine it will be fetching all the information and it will be providing to you so something like uh, in our college we have a proxy server and whoever the student they want to access it or even the faculty members we need to connect to the tower server first so and from the server only we can go for connecting to the web and through that only we can do the transactions so without connecting to our uh, proxy server we cannot do any transactions so what is the use of this web proxy so when you use uh, uh, this web proxy uh, client do not have access the, uh, to the web directly so the reason behind it if you are accessing uh, uh, the websites directly so sometime there is a possibility you may uh, um, lead to uh, an unwanted access or uh, unlimited access will be doing it or sometime uh, you, uh, you the privilege has been given for each and every user what will happen sometime the downloads and so many other complications will come so to streamlining it so they have brought this particular mechanism called web proxy and whenever you are making a request it will go to the proxy and the proxy will uh, kind of a filter mechanism which will be going for filtering your request and if it is uh, according to the policy which has been set by the, the concern organization if it is fit then it will be allowed to proceed further in case if it is not fit then automatically they will go for denying the particular request and will be uh, sent back to you so that is what the uh, biggest advantage when you try to use your uh, proxy server and uh, another one which is used for security logging accounting and performance so again for the security purpose uh, because uh, uh, if you are uh, browsing it you you may not be knowing it you may uh, get into the hackers website if you are getting into the hackers what will happen they might uh, uh, hack our system and the server may go go down or it may be crashed down also so that's the reason why uh, the security has been enhanced uh, through your web proxy and uh, there's a security layer has been there and that will take care of that particular security aspects and as well as uh, when you try to access uh, we'll be having a, a mechanism called log which will contain all the information so uh, which website that you're visiting and uh, what are the uh, transactions that you're doing everything i can able to uh, monitor it so through this uh, web proxy so uh, for example if you're sitting at a lab and if you're working or if you're uh, 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 using a laptop and through that if you're connecting to our uh, college server so where i can able to bring your desktop screen and uh, uh, and whatever you're doing on your desktop uh, or uh, your laptop we can able to see on it so that is an another uh, beautiful mechanism so something like a uh, ui which has been created and through that uh, we can able to monitor you whatever you are doing it 
okay and it's been accounting so because uh, each and every user has been uh, logged in and uh, when they are logged in and when they logged out and what are the websites are they used how much uh, uh, amount of data they consumed the entire thing we can able to uh, monitor it so it's the accountability also has become another important thing and along with that the performance also because we we are limiting so we are limiting to the according to the user uh, uh, category we are limiting it so for a student there is a limit has been given so only that much uh, uh, data you can able to download it and when you go for a faculty there will be a next level and when you go for a, a management they will have a next a higher level so in that way uh, we are limiting that uh, data tra transfers and through that uh, the performance will be enhanced so that is what the advantage when you go for using the uh, web proxy uh, students uh, up, up to this any doubt you can ask me need out no sir so the next one is which is being called as uh, web catchy so uh, web catchy uh, basically uh, i think that uh, something uh, which will be storing the information which has been recently accessed by the users so uh, whatever web pages are the website that you are visiting it all these information will be kept over here and later on uh, if you want to uh, revisit the page so instead of going for uh, retyping it and connecting it so which will be stored in your uh, local uh, storage and from there itself will be retrieving it and be given to you so that is what the advantage when you use uh, uh, web catching mechanism so uh, storing copies of recently accessed web pages so uh, whatever the recent pages that have been accessed by you and that uh, data will be stored here and you not to go for accessing it again so from the local system it will be fetching out and be providing it. otherwise what will happen every time if you go for request uh, making a request and it is sent to proxy and from the proxy it will need to pass to isp from the isp it need to pass to the corresponding uh, server and uh, from there it need to fetch out the information again via it, uh, it has to reach back to you so it will take more time instead of that uh, the same page if you are going for visiting again and again so that is the case you put it in local and so that uh, you can visit it only thing is the update information if you want to just refresh the page so that it will be providing the updated information so that is what the advantage when you go for using the web catching mechanism in your uh, either maybe in your local system or it may be in your server also so here the pages are being delivered from the catchy when request is requested again that's what i told so when you go for requesting for the second time or a subsequent time so which will be uh, delivered from your uh, uh, machine uh, already has a uh, capacity where it will be storing all those pages so from there it will be retrieving it and be uh, providing that particular information to you instead of every time going to the server and connecting it and uh, bringing it back so the reason behind it uh, when you are targeting the server every time what will happen if the load will go up so when the load is go up then uh, which might uh, lead to uh, slowing down the process that's the reason why they have brought this particular mechanism of web catching and here if you see that uh, we have uh, two different uh, things one is called browser catching another one is called proxy catching so browser catching where uh, which will be part of your browser itself and uh, the, uh, when are you going for uh, internet explorer or it may be your uh, google chrome or it may be uh, firefox or some other web browser that you are using it which will contain that particular uh, capability where it will store whatever website that have been visited by you it will be stored for a certain duration so where you can specify how, how long you want to retain the particular information so that many days or that many months it will retain the particular information after that you go for destroying it or if you want you can manually also you can go for destroying the particular information so that is called a browser catchy and proxy catchy which is something like which will be stored in the server and uh, whoever has been visiting all those informations and whatever website they have visited all those things will be part of your proxy catchy itself and it will be kept over there and uh, there also you can able to set the timing so when you want to destroy the particular information you can set it accordingly to go for destroying the information till then it will be retain the particular information so that uh, later if you go for visiting it we can uh, retrieve from the catchy itself so that is what the advantage when you go for using this catchy mechanism So what are the need of this particular uh, catch? So shorter response time. So as I already mentioned, so uh, quick response, you'll be getting that uh, data very faster. So because every time you need to go for targeting on the server machine, so which will be uh, the same page has been available in your local system, which will be fetching out and will be providing to you. So that is what the biggest advantage when you go for using the, uh, the catch. 
and uh, the second one is reduced bandwidth requirements again uh, because when you're making a request so which need to travel uh, via network and you need to reach to the other uh, system which has been uh, uh, maybe in the uh, same building or it may be in the uh, different buildings or it may be in the different part of the country or it may be a different part of the world also so uh, for that it will, the traveling time to take and it will carry the data and we need to uh, need to reach to that uh, target machine so for that you need to have a sufficient bandwidth to do that particular process so instead of that if it has been kept in a cache the same uh, page which you requested for it so which will be retrieving from the local machine will be providing to you so which will become much faster so where we can able to reduce the bandwidth requirement also and another one is we can able to reduce the load on the server so uh, again uh, that is another uh, important thing so every time when i are going for making a request so what will happen the load of the server will be getting increased. so that can be reduced so the number of users when they try to uh, fit on it if it has been get reduced what will happen automatically it will be reducing the load of the server and because the same information has been available in your local machine itself so why you need to target again and again for the same page multiple requests instead of that some other user can be given with a chance so that is what the ultimate uh, aim behind this particular catchy mechanism and access control and login so here uh, there is a access control mechanisms also being introduced uh, whenever you are going for uh, accessing the same page and again and again so instead of going for targeting the particular uh, server machine again and again so we can stop it at one point and where uh, you can access that particular data which is being available in your local system itself so that's kind of a access control mechanism we can brought for this particular catchy and as well as the logging information also you can able to get on it so where it will be providing that when you logged in and when you logged out and what are the things that you've done all these things we can able to uh, see it from the logging itself so that is what the advantage when you go for using this catchy so these are the few uh, popular uh, proxy uh, catchy which has been available in the market so uh, number one apache uh, proxy which is an uh, which has come, come from the apache uh, company so that is one of the proxy uh, uh, server and for that uh, they have used the catchy mechanism and another one is the MS proxy server, which is the Microsoft uh, uh, proxy server, which is also been available. So especially used for uh, Microsoft related stuff. And Win proxy that is again uh, for uh, Windows uh, uh, network based system. So which is all uh, networking operating system for that this Win proxy has been used. And uh, the, another one is Squid. So uh, this is also uh, a, a proxy server system where which has a catchy mechanisms being available. So it's one of the popular uh, uh machine for uh, proxy server as well as proxy catchy also which is be, uh, because it is powerful and configurable and it is free also so that is what the advantage when you go, try to use the squid and along with that uh, many other uh, proxy servers also been available in the market so for linux and for mac os and for solaris so for different uh, os they have their own catchy mechanism and uh, through that uh, they are uh, enhance their performance So uh, it's all about a proxy uh, server. And next one, is, which we are going to discuss is nothing but web server. <clears throat> what is this web server? So before getting to the web server, the most important thing you should aware of it, which is nothing that the protocol and the user agent that you're trying to use on it for accessing the particular uh, page. So uh, first one is the HTTP is the uh, baseline protocol, which has been adapted in the market uh, for uh, any kind of records being come from the web browser and uh, that that in turn will be passing to the server and via that will be accessing the, the corresponding pages and it will be uh, given back to you so now uh, hypertext transfer protocol uh, which is being used to transfer the web pages from web server to the web client so from the web server so web uh, basically if you seen that web server has uh, a capacity where it can hold a huge amount of data and uh, from there uh, you, whichever data that you want the client need to give a request so when the client want to give a request the client has to give a request via yeah, web browser through a web browser if you give a request and that request will be passing to the uh, web server and from the web server uh, which will be checking that what kind of request is being made by the client whether it is a static request or it is a, a dynamic request or it may be an active request so based on the type of request it will go for fetching out the corresponding information from the machine and that will be 
transferred to their requested place. So that is what uh, it is happening. So where the web server has been acting as an intermediate and through that, uh, uh, which is be fetching that information for you. Now, the web pages are being arranged in a directory structure in the web server. So when you try to access any of the web pages, there'll be a directory structure which will be created and where it will be kept all these uh, things. Something like uh, you might have seen that uh, Windows Explorer in your system. So in Windows Explorer, if you've seen that uh, there'll be kind of a tree structure which will be created where uh, each and every folder will be kept and inside the folders, subfolders and the files, everything will be kept. And when you want access, you need to target on the particular folder and then you can just expand it and you can be able to see that whatever the subfolders as well as whatever uh, the files are being part of the particular uh, system, you can be able to see on it. So in that way only you'll be accessing it. So similar kind of mechanism even adapted for your web server also. So all your web pages are being stored in the particular directory structure. And whenever you're giving a request, which will go targeting on that particular directory and from there we'll be fetching out the information and be providing to you. So that is what it has been happening at the behind. And HTTP uh, will support uh, CGI, which is nothing that common gateway interface. So here the common gateway interface, uh, as I already mentioned, if it's a static data, which will be stored in your machine, which will be directly taken away and it will be given to you. But in case if it is a dynamic request. So what is the dynamic request? So just uh, they want to know that what is the latest uh, date and time or uh, some data that need to be processed and then uh, final result need to be uh, given back to the user. So, or uh, you are requesting for your marks card. So the marks card where it will be kept on the uh, uh, database server. So anyway, you need to connect a web server and via that only you can go for connecting to the database and from there you need to fetch out your information. So where we need to have a common interface. So why are that only we can go for connecting it. So that has been called as a CGI common gateway interface. And through that we'll be going for connecting that particular desired uh, location. And from there we'll be fetching out the information. It will be given back to you. So the such TP also has the support for the CGI. And it's also having a support for virtual hosting also. That means we, we can able to host multiple sites on the same server. So it's not that only one server, uh, sorry, uh, uh, one website, even you can go for uh, uh, hosting multiple websites on the same server, which is very much possible. So uh, that is what another advantage when you try to use your HTTP. And uh, here, uh, some of the web famous web server has been listed out here. One is Apache, so Apache Tomcat, and uh, another one is Windows IAS. So Windows uh, IAS, nothing that uh, uh, internet information service, so which is called IAS. And now it's become integral part of your uh, ASP.NET itself. So you need not to start your IA server separately, but when you go for ASP, when you're using ASP, that is the older edition of uh, uh, ASP.NET, which is called ASP. So during that time, you have to start our IA separately. So that means first we need to start the server and then only we can go for uh, running our ASP application. But now it's become integral part of your tool itself. So you need not to go for starting it. The moment when you're going for executing your ASP.NET uh, files, which will automatically invoke the server and from there will be start running on it. So that has been called as Windows IAS. Another one is uh, WebSphere, which is uh, which has come from the uh, company called IBM. So this is another one of the uh, famous web server. And along with that, we have a web logic also has been there. So that is a company called BEA. BEA is the company. So where they have created this particular web logic. And that is another web server. And along with that, we have a JBoss, which is another web server. And uh, from IBM also, we have one more, which is called RAD. So, uh, which is nothing that rational application development because all IBM products are being called as rational products. So, rational application development, which has an inbuilt, uh, again, in term, which has an inbuilt web server itself. And uh, so, like that, there are so many uh, other servers are being available in the market web server. And through that, we can go for uh, accessing the information from the uh, server machine and uh, which will be supplied to the, the corresponding client which has been requested uh, for the information. So this is what all about uh, web server. Right. And uh, here uh, they are given the details uh, uh, about uh, which are the fast moving servers being used in the uh, world and what is the percentage uh, of utilization by a customer. So that is what it has been given. So it's a kind of a survey which has been uh, done from the w3tech.com. Uh, and uh, from there, they have uh, identified these details. So if you've seen that Apache uh, Tomcat, it has been uh, used almost 52.2 percentage. So that is the top of one in the market. And uh, the other one is called uh, Nikunix, 
so which is 35 point by percentage is being used in the market and then followed by microsoft ias and then lightspeed google server tomcat and then ideal web server so there are so many other servers are being listed out in this particular uh, uh, comparison study which they have done it and uh, based on that they have uh, given the list so which are the uh, highest percentage of utilization of the server in the market we seen that apache is the one which has been leading into the market and followed by uh, Liquinix, that is the 35, sorry, 30.5, and then followed by Microsoft as the third position. So, and the remaining all of you see that it is all uh, comparatively less, very lesser percentage. But the top of one is going to be an Apache, which has been most widely used web server in the market. So, we have seen what is that web server. Now, the next one which is called web client. So, a web client is an application that communicates with the web server using http and http uh, is nothing but a protocol behind uh, every request being made by the client via triple w and with every web trans transactions http has been invoked so whenever uh, uh, the client want to communicate the client want to communicate to the server the first most important thing is the client will be using a protocol which has been called as http so hypertext transfer protocol and through that only it will go for giving a request and for that it has a format this has been called as url uniform resource locator so where we need to provide that uh, uh, triple w so that is the uh, forum i already told you so i already mentioned you so through this uh, triple w that is uh, w3 consortium and uh, that is the first thing and followed by we need to uh, provide the uh, the domain name which you are trying to access on it and then followed by we need to give the uh, uh, whether it is belongs to commercial or it is going to be organization or it is going to be uh, edu education so something else we need to provide on it and and then if it is a country specific we need to provide the country specific extension also and through that only you will be uh, trying to access on it and when you try to access on it if you see that http has become underlying mechanism through that only will be targeting on each and every machine being part of the world so that is what the biggest advantage when you try to use your web client so these are the uh, different types of uh, web clients are being available in the market so one is called fat client, another one is called thin client, and third one is called a hybrid client. So first one is a flat, fat client. So what is this fat client? So uh, also known as a, a rich client or a thick uh, client. So uh, a client that performs bulk of any data processing operations itself and does not necessarily rely on the server. So the personal computer is a common example of a fat client because of its relatively large set of features and capabilities and its uh, uh, light relevance upon a server. So for example, a computer running on a CAD program such as AutoCAD or CATIA, that ultimately shares the result of its work on a network is a flat client. Now, so what is this flat client? We can say it's called as a rich client or a thick, thick client. So uh, nowadays, if you've seen that the individual machine that you're using, which has a capability of server, so because uh, which has a huge capacity and as well as storage capacity and we have a ram rom and uh, the motherboard as an enhanced motherboard and a lot of things are being incorporated into your individual machine itself so that's the reason why uh, your machine which you are trying to use on it is being called as a fat client because it has a, a lot of features are being available so through that uh, which we can able to uh, run like a server which is very much possible so if the example uh, they are given, which is nothing but a CAD program. So you can able to run your CAD program because CAD program which is a quite heavier one. And when you want to run it, you need to have a machine which should be capability of uh, executing that particular program and uh, which will be producing the output. So if you've seen that AutoCAD uh, is one of the uh, tool which is being used for uh, your uh, whenever the civil engineering construction that they want to do on it, the first thing is they need to create a blueprint. So based on the blueprint only, they'll go for constructing the houses. So that blueprint model, which can be created with the help of AutoCAD, it's not only about uh, uh, civil constructions, even uh, whatever the uh, small, small materials. So are the equipments which you want to create on it. So which you can create with the help of AutoCAD and you can able to see the three dimensions, which is very much possible. So that output you can able to see in your system itself. And the same thing we can able to pass to the other client also. So that's the reason why it's being called as a fat client. That is one of the type of a client. So, and second one is being called as thin client. So thin client is a minimal shot of a client. So thin client use the resources of the host computer. 
a thin client is generally only presents process data provided by the application server which performs uh, bulk of any uh, required data processing a device using web application such as office web apps is a thin client now so uh, those who are already studied here you might uh, studied in ug uh, uh, maybe like uh, three four years back uh, in our uh, uh, third floor uh, one lab which has been uh, uh, dedicated for a thin client now it has been removed but earlier it was there so where uh, uh, it has only the monitor and uh, there will be a small box which will be kept uh, so where it doesn't have anything so the entire uh, entire data will be stored in the server only and uh, the thin client doesn't have basically it doesn't have anything so only that monitor where the display will be getting it and we need to power supply will be switched on and there will be a minimal storage which will be there on your system so uh, something like a temporary storage where you cannot even store the data permanently the moment when you switch off the computers the data will be destroyed so whatever data if you want to save it you need to save it on the server only so those kind of things being called as a thin client okay so uh, which has a minimal storage capacity and we can use it only for uh, certain basic operations which you can able to perform on it so you cannot go for uh, doing something uh, like a graphics or uh, um, um, something like IDE tools, those things are all you cannot use it because it doesn't have that particular capability. It has only a minimal data processing capability where you can go for using the something like a MS Office or if you want, you can go for using the uh, C and C++. So those kind of uh, uh, minimal uh, software where you can use it and then that you can uh, uh, you can store again when you want to store the data, you need to store on the server only. You cannot store it on the client because it's all something like a dummy machines. Okay, so that is being called as a thin client. And the last one is being called as hybrid. So there itself we have an answer. It is a, a combination of both fat and thin. So hybrid client is a mixture of above two client models. Uh, similar to fat client, it is processed locally, but it relies on the server for uh, storing persistent data. So this approach offers features from both the fat client, so which has a multimedia support and high performance and the thin client high, high uh, manageability and flexibility so the device running on online version of uh, the video game uh, diablo 3 is an example of hybrid client so now uh, hybrid client which is basically combination of uh, fat and thin both the clients uh, combination they have created this particular system and here if you seeing that uh, uh, using this uh, 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 type of fat client we can able to process the data locally and uh, but for storing the persistent data where we need to depending on the server we cannot store because it has only limited storage has been available and for a huge volume of storage we need to depend on the server and there only you can go for storing it so that time it will become thin client and for processing that particular enhanced data where it has become a fat client because the flat client is as a capability of doing any kind of records being made by the client it can able to process on it so something like a multimedia support so here the multimedia is nothing that uh, multiple mediums so your text, audio, video, graphics, animations, everything you can able to run from your uh, system itself. So that's why it become fat client. And for storing it, you cannot store it here because you need to store it on the server. So that's it's become called as a thin client. So here uh, the advantage when you go for using this particular hybrid uh, system, uh, which has high performance and along with it, multimedia, uh, multiple medium support also is being given uh, in this particular fat client. But in terms of thin client, it is uh, high manageability. So you can able to manage it very easier and it has a flexibility also. So that's the reason why uh, uh, they are using this particular uh, hybrid uh, client. And one of the uh, famous games has been uh, uh, used this particular hybrid client model, which is nothing that video game Diablo 3. So they are using this particular thin cl hybrid uh, client uh, for uh, doing all these things. So hope you understood that uh, web client and along with the types of web client also any any doubt in this students after this any doubt no sir okay fine so next one is going to be email so this is basically uh, an email architecture. So uh, before going for explaining it email, uh, as you have been aware of that, uh, uh, email has become a mandatory part of our uh, life. 
so whenever you want to communicate uh, anything uh, to your uh, uh, peer or it may be to communicate to uh, the teachers or communicate uh, uh, between uh, uh, boss and subordinates so currently they are using this email so without email uh, uh, we cannot imagine it and uh, people will have many email ids and uh, through that they are going for communication so that be an official email ID as well as a personal email id uh, for official email will be in all official transaction will be uh, get transferred and for the personal uh, they will be using that uh, personal email ID all for a personal information they will be uh, doing it right and uh, here the email also has been available in uh, in terms of free as well as in terms of uh, uh, cost also so free in the sense uh, the, it has a limitation so limit what limitation so when you try to attach any of the files which has a limitation of 25 mb you cannot uh, attach more than that and if you want to go for attaching more than that it will be treated as a link so where you can use the google drive and through the link you can chat with the other uh, uh, client whom you are trying to target on it or whom you are trying to send that particular information the email right so uh, but if you go for a paid version so where you'll be having a, a huge volume of data where there is no restrictions of uh, uh, limiting uh, the client so you don't have any limitations because you have been uh, using paid version so when you're using a paid version so you'll be having a flexibility of uh, more uh, additional features are being added into that and uh, instead of uh, normal uh, uh, email you can uh, send a group emails and you can create a group emails and then you can connect with them and like that there are so many other facilities are being uh, available uh, when you go for using the email and uh, even the companies nowadays they are using one of the mechanisms called email uh, etiquettes uh, that has become mandatory. Uh, so the reason behind it, uh, uh, many uh, students, those who are joining uh, as an intern uh, into the organization, so they doesn't know how to uh, draft an email and send to the uh, the person whom they are reporting on. So that's the reason why uh, uh, in currently it is seen that many of the organization, they have come up with this uh, particular training session where uh, they are given the training for email etiquettes. So how to uh, create an email and how to send to uh, uh, the persons. So for that, basically, they they are giving a training to the interns, and from there uh, they are developing the particular culture. So something like a soft skill become mandatory for the people those who uh, join for organization. Similarly, they are expecting the email etiquette also, because uh, when you are addressing to the uh, your uh, uh, leader or it may be your uh, project manager, so that time you need to. Uh, uh, the way that you are uh, drafting the email is become more important or if you are uh, just uh, sending to your friends or if you are sending to your peers so those kind of uh, scenarios you, you can uh, put in a different way so and there are short forms which which cannot be acceptable when you send as a professional uh, uh, email right so something like a hi uh, asp uh, or uh, gm so uh, like that you cannot use all these short uh, words so that can be used with your friends, but when you are sending official email, so uh, you should have a proper way of drafting it and then you have to send it. So for that, uh, nowadays the organizations, they are providing the uh, training to the students with the form of email etiquettes. So with this, uh, I'm just stopping this particular uh, lecture session. So uh, today, whatever we discussed, something like we started with the uh, uh, proxy server, and then uh, followed by uh, types of proxy server, we had a discussion. And then uh, we have discussed about uh, a web server. And then we had a discussion about a web client. And then followed by, I just give the introduction about uh, email. So uh, the coming up class, we'll be discussing about that uh, email architecture.